Good morning. Welcome to our services on today. Well, it's a, it's a blessed day, y'all. And it's another Sunday morning, and this is our fifth Sunday. So this is our unity Sunday. So I want to encourage all of you to make sure that you uh, like us, make sure you share, and make sure you let, let others know that we are on the air at this moment live. And encourage them to stay tuned throughout the service because we got a very special announcement at the end of these services today. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you this morning and we praise you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercy. Thank you that you always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And we decree and declare that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As we enter into your gates, we enter there with thanksgiving and we bless your name. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for watching over us last night. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for our help and our strength. Thank you that we have authority over the devil and no demon power can hinder or stop us in any form or any fashion. We give you praise this morning as we take authority over the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare that Jesus is Lord over these services. That every ear is anointed to hear and every tongue is anointed to speak forth as the oracles of God. We thank you, Lord God, as pastor preaches the day he will preach with the fire of God, with the anointing of God, and the words of God will have a free course in this place. And Father, we just thank you and we bless you. We pray for all of our members and our partners in holiness. We lift them up before you. We pray that you will continue to fill them with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And every one of them is walking worthy of you unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. We declare your glory in this place, and we thank you, Lord God, as the worship leaders, lead us in that place of worship, that we experience your power, we experience your presence, we experience your anointing as we give you glory and praise and worship and honor. Our God, you're an awesome God, and we thank you that you reign in this place. We give you praise in Jesus' name. We commit these service to you now. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of God's people say glory to God and amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our praise and worship team. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For the Lord has given us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We're going to enter in. We're going to center ourselves. And we're going to praise the name of Jesus for he is good. The word says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. He is good. No matter what's going on, he's good. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good.
you lift your voice to the Lord yeah. and declare that he's good. For he's good all the time. And all the time the Lord is good. He's given us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So lift up your hands. Lift up your voice and give him the worship and the praise he deserves. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, you are good. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. You are you are you are good. to put a spirit of heaviness upon us. But Lord God, we thank you that you've given us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We thank you that we can enter into the Holy of Holies. That in your presence there's fullness of joy. Yes. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So we, we take advantage of that and we enter in right now. We declare you to be good. No matter what's going on, we declare you we declare you to be good, for you are good all the time, and all the time you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're a good, good father, that's who you are, that's who you are, that's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. That's who I am. It's who I am. Who I am. Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. and you're perfect in all of your ways, you're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways to us. Sing that with me. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways to Perfect in all of your ways. Love your ways. You're perfect in all. You're perfect in all of your ways. Oh, perfect in all of your ways. To us, you're perfect. You're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways.
good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good. so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I tried for you've been so good to Let's declare his goodness. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you've been good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try for you, so right now. You've been so good. You are 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 so good. You've been so good. So God, you're a good father, Abba Father. You are good. You're so good to us, Lord God. We thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. If you would turn your attentions to the screens right now, you may be seated in the presence of Morning the Morning Breath of Life, and welcome to Bell News. Zoom Connect groups are coming soon. Please contact Mark Creighton for information. His email address is mcreighton.com. 1292 at gmail.com and his phone number is 901-219-6776. Good morning, Saints. This is Mark Craig with uh, BOLCC Connect Groups. For those in Forest City and here in, Mem in uh, Memphis, we just want to uh, just let you know that Connect Groups are starting up on the 6th of September. That will be an introductory session where you'll get with the facilitator and learn all the rules and etiquettes for getting on, on the connect groups. Uh, the, uh, the actual uh, classes will begin, or facilitation will begin on the 13th of September. And uh, you can uh, get with your facilitator, get your materials ready. Uh, for those of you that have online books, it works great. Uh, for those that uh, want to have hard copies, that'll be fine as well. But anyway, if you need help on Zoom, you can click on the link that's, uh, that has my name there, and uh, you can get help, but I'll give you my phone number where you can text me, 901-219-6776. You can also see uh, Cameron Johnson as well. He's, he's there as well to help with uh, getting you to Zoom. But it's going to be a great time. Let's, let's all do it. It's new technology. We can do it from home and make it work well. Thank you very much, Saints.
Hallelujah, glory, good morning, everybody, Merry Sunday and all that good stuff. Glad to be with you today. We're gonna have a good time in the things of Amen. God. Amen. All right, uh, I rose uh, today <laughs> for the offering and to, uh, y'all know it's offering time, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, the Lord, the Lord uh, shared something with me, tell you, concerning the, these scriptures here, uh, Genesis 26. Uh, I'll just read it to you. You can read it if you want. Genesis 26, 1. Now there was a famine in the land of Canaan, besides the previous famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham. So Isaac went to Gerah and Abimelech, king of the Philistines. I want to drop down to verse 12. It said, then Isaac planted seed in the land as a, as, a, as a farmer and reaped, I'm reading out the Amplified, and reaped in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. And the Lord blessed him, blessed and favored him. Now here's what I want to share with you just before we receive the offering. And that is, we, you know, a lot of people are in a famine now, not only just in the United States, but all around the world. And uh, you, when you're in a famine, you don't stop giving to God. That's what the devil is trying to get you to do. But you have to find something that belongs to you and then give to God. Remember, Isaac here now that he's still in the, uh, uh, when, he, when he laid that, pray, uh, sowed that seed, he, he was still in the land of a famine, in the year of a famine. But when he sowed that seed, then he, 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 he gave God something that God could use to bring him out of the famine and bring the, the people in the country that he was in out of the famine. So you don't stop giving when you're in a famine, but you find something to give God all the time. And I know everybody remember the widow woman and Elijah. How, how Elijah, you know, prophesied wasn't going to be in the rain for three and a half years, and that was, and he got what he prophesied. And uh, uh, the the everything dried up. It was a, they entered into a famine, and uh, the woman. Or was one day picking up uh, chips and things to make a fire, go cook the last meal she had. And God had ordained that the prophet Elijah would come and, and, and minister to her. And he told her, bring me, bring me the first cake, make a little cake first and bring it to me. In other words, she, he's getting her to sow in this famine, out of her famine. He's getting her to sow. And when, when she did that, she, now she said, I'm going to cook it and me and my son are going to die. But when she did that, when she brought him the first little, little cake, then that, that enabled God to every time for a, a year, she went back to that, that, that little old amount of flour and, and oil. There always was some in there for one more day. God, God, wants us to understand when things are going on in the world, we use kingdom principles. We use kingdom principles. So I just wanted to st stir your faith and let you know that God always has a way. He always has a way giving and receiving. Don't care what you're going through, what's going on in the world, God has already promised that sowing and reaping will always work as long as the earth remains. That's in Genesis 8, 22. As long as the, the, the uh, night comes and the day comes, the winter comes and the summer comes, God says, whenever you sow a seed, seed harvest comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's, go, let's uh, give our, get ready to give our offerings and tithes now. Uh, all your in information that for you to get it done will be on the screen right now. Right now it's up there. 
You can, you can give by text. You can text the number there, give to 865-325-4913. And uh, you can get that done real quick. If you're on our streaming network, you can click on that givens icon and it will prompt you as to how to sow your seed. And the scripture I just shared with you, make sure you got them turning in your heart as you, as you plant that seed and put it and give it to today. Have that in your heart, see, have that faith, believe in God. And God can, can keep you going forth, not missing a meal in a famine, amen. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody today as they sow their seed, as they sow sparingly, they reap sp sparingly. As they sow bountifully, they reap bountifully. The key word, Father, we realize is so. So what's, according to what's in our hearts, the Bible said that you love a cheerful giver. So we refuse to not be full of cheer and joy as we bring these tithes and offerings. Whatever may be going on around us, Lord, you are still good. And we sow this seed into the kingdom today, knowing that you have made a promise that harvest will come and you are not a man that you should lack. So we thank you now as we stand on faith in the words that we have heard and, and, until we receive the corresponding harvest in Jesus' name. And all the people said, wherever you are, hallelujah, amen. Praise God. All right, thank God for it. God is good all the time. All right, uh, uh, got an announcement here myself. Uh, some, some of you have been asking me and been asking other folk, can you come sit in the, in the sanctuary while, sir, while we're down here recording and, and, and being, well, we were live, we live. Well, we're, we're down here on Sunday morning. Now, just think about that, what you're asking me to do. Uh, if we let you do it, Next Monday, next Sunday it'll be two or three more. Then the next time, see, uh, and uh, uh, just just be patient. Be patient. The Bible said, "Let patience have its perfect work." God knows what's going on. God knows what you, what, what what you're in, and let the word of God do it. The same thing, the, the word of God, the praise and worship, worship and praise with the praise and worship singer, sow and reap and, 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 and wait on God. Amen. All of us want to be back where everything is, is, is just like it used to be. But we got, we, we, it's not that time yet. The time will come. The time will come. And uh, I just want to exhort you we want to see you, you want to see us, but we don't want to give the enemy any play. And uh, uh, if, I have to, if, if you do it, then I can't be picking and, and have favorites and all that kind of stuff. So let's just, let's just do it like we're doing until we hear from the Lord. Amen. Uh, not fussing, just encouraging you to not get out ahead of being patient. Let it have its perfect word. God is doing something in, in, in our lives, and it'll be a mature, that's what that word perfect means, mature. It'll be a mature thing that he, he, he does that will be a blessing to all of us if we hold on to his promises in the word of God. Amen. So uh, always, always know that we are thinking of you, we love you, and uh, I, I just want to be, you know, that everybody, everybody, be, be, a, be able to do the same thing. We got something planned for you real soon that'll put us together uh, for, 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 it won't put us where we can touch and you know, just squeeze folks necks, but it'll put you together. You, we, you'll be hearing about it real soon. Amen, praise God. So uh, I just want to let you know, don't get mad at me, get glad because I'm helping you to, to uh, not push us out before the time, amen. Uh, uh, that's all I'll say about that today. Now, let's, let's hear from our music ministry again, and we'll come back with the word.
lost for words And the funny thing is It's okay The last thing I need Is to be heard But to hear What you would say Word of God speak Would you point Washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. I want to stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. Finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, all that I need is to be with you, and in the quiet, hear your voice. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. I want to stay and rest in your holiness, word of God speak. Would you pour it down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. I want to stay and rest in your holiness, word of God speak. Would you pour Word of God, speak. Word of God, speak. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is, it's okay. Lord, our hearts are open to you. We give you full permission to have your way in our hearts and in our lives. We thank you for the word that's about to go forth, oh Lord God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit just having his way in our hearts and in our lives. We're open to you. Hallelujah. Jesus, we want to hear from you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Mr. Christian. That was a good ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, we're ready to get into the Word of God now. Hallelujah. Yay, yay. God is good, amen. We are blessed people. Tell somebody there with you in the room, ask somebody there with you, tell them they're blessed. They might have forgotten it. 
we are blessed people. We're going to pray now and get into the word of God. Father, we are so thankful today. There is nobody else like you. Thank you from the bottom of our heart for the word of God. We will be lost, drifting in a boat without a sail. We just praise you today that we are in this time and our hearts and minds are to worship you and to praise you and to bring you to as many people as we possibly can before it's time for us to leave this earth. And as we come here today, we know that you have something you want to put into our hearts and lives today. So we open our hearts, we open our minds to receive whatever it is you pour in, pouring out into our lives today. We know it's good. We know that it will bring spirit life to us so that we can share it with others. We refuse to be distracted, but we choose to be attentive with our whole hearts to feed on your word today. To this end, Father, I pray that you will use this vessel in its entirety, spirit, soul, and body, to bless your people with the word of God today. We will forever be thankful, forever be grateful. In the name of Jesus, we ask it and believe we receive it done. And all the people say it, amen. Oh, pray we heard that all around the world here. Praise God. We still are dealing with Holiness and truth must be in the church. It's just getting, getting more and more uh, in, inside of me. It's just growing more and more. Think about it. If the church doesn't radiate holiness and truth, where are people going to find it? Nowhere else to find it. But, the, but from the church. And when I say church, I'm not just talking about the body, although I am talking about that, uh, you know, as an undergird. But I'm talking about we as people, we are the church. And we have to think sometimes, think back, that when Jesus comes for us, he's not taking any buildings away. He's coming for people, coming for us. And we, we got to start living like that. Our mind focused on who we are, what our purpose is, and who we have to glorify. We have a God to glorify. Amen. And there's nothing like a holy life grounded in truth that can give people light and life. So that's what we're about, amen? And Paul was writing here to, to the Apostle Paul, writing to the bishop, uh, bishop or pastor, whatever you like, shepherd. Uh, he's writing to him, telling him that holiness and truth must. And Paul said, if, you know, if I tarry, if I can't get to you quick, I'm writing this letter so you'll know that holiness and truth must. That's a big word, must. See? You'll know how to handle yourself, and it must be, be in, the, in, in, the, in the church. Praise God. So uh, uh, then he says in Hebrews 12, 14, to be holy because, uh, uh, no, Hebrews 12, 14 say, says, uh, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man, I don't care what your position is, without holiness in your life, no man shall see God. 
Now, a lot of people have taken that to mean no man will go to heaven. It might, you know, I don't know if it means that or not, really. I, I'm talking about seeing God. It says no man shall see God. Uh, 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 a lot of folk don't like to think about it. And, and, you know, but I believe, I hold that a person can get to heaven and not see God. Won't be, they won't be prepared to see God. Uh, God sent Jesus down for a purpose. Why didn't God come down himself? Why didn't he come down in his, in his spirit, in his glow, and in his consuming fire? Why didn't he come down himself? No, he came, he sent Jesus in a, in a human body so that Jesus could feel the infirmities of man. That Jesus is man, he is a man. As much man as he is God. Uh, First Timothy tells us that, amen. That there's, there's one who is making, uh, uh, there's one in heaven that's, that's, that's advocating for us, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, so uh, understand that, that a holy life causes us to be able to be in the presence of God. If you're not, if you're not going after holiness, the Bible just says you won't see him. And uh, we want everybody to see God. Amen. So we're moving on today. We're going to turn in our Bibles today to 1 Samuel 7 and 3. 1 Samuel 7 and 3. When you get there, say amen. Somebody will hear you. <laughs> when you get there, say amen. Uh, we're going to start here at verse 3. Now, what we're doing now is finding out uh, that we need holiness and truth in the church so that people can walk in health and abundance. If, 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 if holiness and truth is not there, you cannot live your life in, in health and you can't live your life in abundance. You, uh, you might work on one of those areas and, and you know, get, 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 a, get to a, a good degree of, of, of health. But there's, there are some things that are, the devil will come at you with that only God, only the word of God can help you, especially when, when man runs out in, in, in his ability to help you. I've gone through that while, while men ran out and said they couldn't treat me, couldn't, couldn't kill. Uh, and, you know, I was so glad that I had the word of God. I had the truth. And, we, and see, there's a lot of truths in the world but you, the truth you can only find in the word of God. J uh, Jesus, as he was praying to God right before he, he left earth, the night before he left earth, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. See, thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. Now, there are a lot of truths, facts in the earth, but the truth you don't get to until you get to God till you get to the word of God. Amen. And uh, 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 that, that's what we are after. And if we, will, if we will, as the body of Christ, endeavor to live that way, to, to, to live holy according to the truth. And you can't live holy without the truth. Get a hold of that. So, so just, just studying the word of God to know how to live and then being willing to go ahead and live by what you read and, 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 and find out from God's word. To, it's just a big difference from reading it and knowing it versus getting into it and living by it. It's a big difference there. Uh, a whole lot of folk can quote scripture, but 
there's not too many that have made this, this, this uh, uh, declaration in their lives. I'm going to live by the word of God. I'm going to read it, I'm going to meditate it, and I'm going to live by it. It's going to be my standard for living. And see, when you, when you make that decision and begin to do it, then you are walking in truth and you don't even have to worry about trying to put on holiness. Holiness is going to uh, be there with the truth. It's always with truth, see. So what we're looking at then is to watch, see, God will, will take, the, take the place, he'll, he'll take part in, in, our, in our infirmities, our weaknesses, if we are holding fast to the truth if we are holding fast to holiness. So obedience to the word of God is necessary, uh, is, is necessary for us to walk in truth and to walk in holiness. And as we, as we, as we endeavor to keep holiness and truth in our lives, we, we can see then how God will bring abundance. We talked about that last week. How God uh, uh, beat down David's enemies. How God just beat, beat his enemies down. We show how, we talked about how, how marvelous and how abundantly God made Solomon's life, who was David's son, made Solomon's life because Solomon was committed to God's truth and God's uh, uh, living God's way. All of that young part of his life, when he got old, he made some mistakes. I, I think he made a few mistakes there because he was old and didn't have nothing to do. <laughs> he was, you know, uh, people used to say, an out of mind is what? The Don't devil's work. workshop. And we ought to always make sure. When, see, when you think there's nothing to do, that's the time you get up, feed on the Word of God, meditate in the Word of God, and you'll find out how much it was to do. See? So if you're, not just, if you're not just always doing something, purpose to do something, you, you, be, you, you are, how can I say it, you are a candidate for the enemy to pick your mind and lead you down the wrong track. But as long as he was young and had all that vitality and was carrying out the purpose for which he was in the earth, building that temple and building that, his house, uh, he was, God was so pleased with him and God, God f first fell in love with Solomon when God asked Solomon, tell me what you want. Ask me what, what is it you want me to do for you? And Solomon said, I want you to give me wisdom and understanding so I can minister to your people. He said, go out and come in. He's talking about, he's really talking about uh, being a blessing to him so that he doesn't lead them astray. And God, he, God just, 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 just almost melted when he said that. God said, because you have asked me this, you have asked this of me, I'm going to, I'm going to give you wisdom and understanding, but I'm also going to make you the richest man in the world and the, the, uh, 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 the richest man and the wisest man in the world. And God did that. And from that day forward, God was constantly growing him, constantly growing him to where anything that he searched out, God would give him understanding in it. Anything that he wanted to find out, God would give him understanding with it. And people come from miles around to receive it. Now today, we're looking at 1 Samuel 7, 3 and 4. I'm, I want you to see that, how that obedience Obedience, you're living by truth and holiness. See, if you, if you live truthful and holy, holy, you're gonna be obedient. That's what you're being, being obedient. And how it brings abundance into anybody's life. Uh, verse three said, and Samuel spake unto all those of Israel saying, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, now see Israel, had been away from God for a while here now, for a while. And that's a good, another good thing about God. I don't care how deep you've gone into sin. It doesn't matter 
how long you've been into sin. If you turn with your heart, if you turn to, with your heart to God, God will hear. He'll, he'll hear and he'll answer your prayer. He'll hear and he'll heal. He begin to heal the things that beset you, whatever it is. When you, when you, with your heart, I don't care how, what you've been, so don't ever let somebody tell you that you're so bad, you, 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 you're such a big sinner that God can't help you and God doesn't want you. That's a lie. It's a lie from, the, from hell. God, God, God says whenever you turn, so you can't fake God, you can't fool him, but whenever you turn, God says, let's read on. He said, if you, if you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and asterisk from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will, he will deliver you. <laughs> I just want to stop there for a moment. He will deliver you. I don't care where you're coming from. He will deliver you. Amen. Amen. Then God said, out of the hand of the Philistine. Well, he'll deliver you out of the hand of drugs. He'll deliver you out of the hand of robbery and murder and all whatever, whatever you found yourself in. God can deliver you from it. Amen. And he's willing to do it. But you, you saw the condition. Put away Put away strange gods and asteroids. Don't have idol gods. Don't get up putting your cars and your house and your money and children and spouses. Don't put anything else above God in your life. That's the first, that's the first requirement. Then he said, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord. Uh, prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. Well, you can't know how to serve him only and prepare your hearts to him until you know what, how he said to do it. So that's going to necessitate reading the word of God, finding people who can help you uh, understand it, and meditating the word of God. Then the big thing is changing your actions to be obedient to the word of God. Bring all your actions into obedience to the word of God. Then God said, then he said, uh, serve him only. He'll deliver you out of the hand of the Philistine. Then the children of Israel did put away. They obeyed God. They obeyed. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and serve the Lord only. Now, I want to challenge you. Are you, are you searching, are you seeking, are you pressing in to serve God only? Are you trying to be live in two worlds? Some folks try to live in three. <laughs> but you got to make up in your mind that God is who I want. The word of God is the way I want to live. Amen. And that's a good time, because I believe right in times that we are going through, we brought them on us. We brought them on us. See, God, God sent and tell people to, 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 to do things, come back to him, come back to him. And, and, and when, you know, God, there comes a time when God stops being long-suffering and, he, and he, he judges, see? He, 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 he begins to judge. And one of the things he does when he judges is let famines and let, let plagues and pestilences come into the earth. And uh, that's, that's what's happening right now. That's what's happening right now. And we could have already been out of this if, if the body of Christ would just turn wholeheartedly to the Lord. God really trying to get you, the United States attention. And they, you know, <laughs> uh, smaller, just check it out now, smaller nations are outdoing our nation far above or away from us, far better than uh, this, this coronavirus situation. Small nations are, are, are really, really uh, putting that thing down. They're going to school. They're getting back to work and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, we like that one-fourth of all the cases of, of all the whole world. We go, we'll make a little turn, then we'll go back because 
don't know about it. We, we got a government that doesn't want to acknowledge it's made some errors that God didn't like, that God didn't want. And then we made, we put, we put laws that are abominable. We made laws out of them and put them into our, our, our way of living. And God let pestilence, he's letting pestilence come on us. That's why, you know, don't be, don't be scared. Don't be uh, uh, full of concern. Pray for folk and, 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 and live by the word of God and, we, and we'll come through this. Yes. We'll come through this. See? Yes. But we gotta be letting people know that God wants repentance. Yes. If we repent, if we, got, we gotta turn our hearts, we gotta change our heart, and we gotta t give God our hearts only. I remember, I remember mean, most of y'all can, can remember, I, I, you know, when I was a real young boy, uh, it, was so much, it was so different. It was so different. It was certain things you couldn't get. You, if you wanted to sin, it was hard to get your hand on sin. I mean, especially on a Sunday. <laughs> it was hard to get your hand. You couldn't even buy a bill. You could, you could, don't even think about buying any, any legal whiskey. Now, folk would make their own uh, white lightning and stuff. But don't even think about it, buying things like that, see. But, uh, and, and so our hearts, see, God raised the nation up. And we got to keep our hearts on God. Yes. And uh, God got to do some things for us now. Uh, look at, uh, let's drop down to verse 10. See, they, 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 they turned and they began to obey God. Watch what happened. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, Wait a minute, let me make sure I, I want to go to 10, yeah. Uh, the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel, but the Lord did what? Thundered. The Lord thundered. And uh, with a great thunder on that day up on the Philistine. Now, I want to, I, I want to read, I want to read the definition of that word thunder right there. Let, uh, I got to get to another Bible to do it though. Uh, that's First Samuel, isn't it? Help me, help me, help me. <laughs> First Samuel seven, and uh, First Samuel seven, and verse ten. Yeah. Uh, here's here's the meaning. First Samuel, I went to tenth chapter. First Samuel seven, verse ten. It's worth waiting. Thundered. This is what it means. Uh, not it. That, uh, I, get back in. First Samuel, verse ten. And the Lord thundered. Yeah, there you go. To make, yeah, here it is. To tumble, to be violently agitated. Get a hold of that. Vi uh, uh, violently agitated. In other words, those folk agitated God. And it also means to irritate, to irritate uh, with anger, to irritate with anger. Make to fret, roar, thunder, trouble. In other words, uh, now those folk, they, 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 they didn't, they, 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 they came, let me get back over here. Yeah, yeah. God thundered on them because the, 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 they were trying to destroy Israel and Israel had repented. Yes, Israel had brought their hearts back to God, and when the Philistines came down at them at that time, God got irritated. God took the battle. He thundered. He shouted. It's almost like speaking out of heaven. Well, you know, in the old, in the New Testament, uh, 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 God God spoke out, and people said it thundered. People said it thunder, but God was talking and they couldn't hear it. 
And, uh, uh, you know, the old folks say, when the thunder and the lightning and God working, I don't know how much that, that's going on, but this time it was true. Uh, uh, he thundered with a great, now what? A great thunder. He, it's kind of like God screaming and hollering. And, and on that day, he did that up on the, up on the Philistine and discomfited them. He, and they were smitten before Israel. So when they turned their heart back to God, God fought the battle. Yes, amen. God fought the battle. Amen. amen. So, so, so if, if you don't have holiness and truth, that battle never would have been won if they hadn't turned back to obedient, obedience to God. Yes. That the, the, the Philistines would keep on defeating them in every battle, but when, they, when their hearts, see, they, they, it wasn't a matter of their weaponry, it was a matter of their conditioning with God. Yes. And God it has no respect of uh, a uh, uh, person. Now, uh, he goes on to say, and the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistine and smote them until they came unto Beth Bethka. So Israel won the battle because of changing, turning, and, and, and uh, filling their heart with God. The attitude, their, their, their turning, their obedience caused God to fight the battle for them. And that's the way God want to do up for us. But we, our hearts have to be toward God. Now look at uh, 2 Chronicles 14.2. Second Chronicles 14, 2. I'm going to read uh, verse 2 to 6 here. And, and Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. On the land, he did good and right in God's eyes. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places, and break down the images, and cut down the groves. Now, now, now think about that. He's working hard. Hard work is going into this. He's getting the things that are in his life that God didn't, didn't that, God, that he couldn't serve God with. He's getting these things out of his life, and that requires action. See, people, people want God to just be magic and come do everything. But you got to work yourself on getting stuff out your life that God doesn't like, that God tells us not to get involved with. So they, they began to work at getting things right with God. <clears throat> Verse 4, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do what? Do the law and the commandment, or in other words, turn to the word and keep the word of God. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images. This king, see, he's doing that. He's making this, this, this his, his subject come to God. The kingdom, uh, and the kingdom was quiet before him. The kingdom was quiet before him, and he built fifth cities in Judah. For the land had rest, and he had no war in those years because the Lord had what? The Lord took all of the striving out of Asa's life when Asa went through the actions of getting his heart right with God, obeying God, and then God fought his battle. And he'll fight our battles too if we, if we do what he said. Now look, drop down to verse 9. Drop down to verse 9. And there came against them after he whooped, after he whooped the Philistine <coughs> because they had turned their heart to God. And there came out against them Zerah the Ethiopian with an host of a thousand, of, of, of a thousand thousand, real quickly, a thousand thousand is one million. One million people coming out to fight against little bitty, little bitty Israel. 
Remember, God said he chose Israel not because they were, were large, but there was few, a few of them. They were small and, and sad. Not in, in, in sad, but in number, rather. And uh, uh, so, so here, uh, where did I stop at? A thousand thousand. And then a th uh, one million three hundred and came unto Marisha. Then Asa went out against him, and they set their battle in array in the valley of Zephata, and uh, uh, big word. <laughs> and Asa cried unto the Lord his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. They, they, they got a relationship with God, and the war is coming out, and they, got, they are so outnumbered, just, just tons of folk coming out to, to kill them. And, and, and they knew how to pray. And uh, uh, where did I stop here at? 11. The Lord our God, let not prevail. Wait a minute, let me go back. And in thy name we will go against this multitude, O Lord, Thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. So the Lord did what? Smote the Egyptian before Asa, before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. So the Lord smote them, they fled, and Asa and the people were with him, the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar, and the Ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves. Watch this now. For they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host and they carried away very much spoil. Asa making one decision. That decision was he going to give God his whole heart and he did the work. He did the work. He did all of the what it takes to get sin out your life. He, he took away all the things that he had made out of God, caused all the people to, make, to take away the things that they had made out of God. And because that happened, God began to take away all of his enemies and, and beat them down and take their stuff. Think about it. it as, as the Ethiopians, you know, I, I, I have to, I have to, you know, them brothers and sisters and things, them Ethiopians right there. Uh, I, you know, let me move on. But, but God beat them down. And as they got poorer, Asa got richer. He's building wealth because God is fighting his battle. He's winning all these battles. And as you win the battle, you get the loot. You get the, you get the bounty as you win the battle. And notice what he goes on to say. Uh, and, and they smote all the cities round about Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them, and they spoiled all the cities, for there was exceeding much spoil in them. Now notice what he's saying. Ethiopia was very rich, had all kind of stuff. They were, they were living high. They were prosperous people. And this one battle changed all that because they had many gods. This one battle changed all that. I'm wanting to go into a whole lot of different places here, but I'm going to be, I'm be, I'm be strict on myself. And uh, uh, they were overthrown. They could not recover themselves. That's 13, right? And Asa and the people that were with him, them uh, were... were pursued them unto Gerar, and the Ethiopians were overthrown, that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host, and they were carried, they carried away very much spoil. They, they smote all the cities round about Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them, and they spoiled all the cities, for there was exceeding much spoil. They smote also the tents, of the cattle and carried away the sheep and camels in abundance and returned.
to Jerusalem. Now, that, that's when Ethiopia was brought down. That's when they were brought down. They attacked Israel after Israel had turned their hearts to the Lord. Holiness and truth were back in Israel, and God is fighting their battles, destroying other, other uh, opposing armies, and making Israel wealthy, giving them abundance because they repented and turned to God. That's, God will do that to us. God, see, I don't care what happened in the first part of your life. God judges you by the last part. Get a hold of that. That's, that's the good thing about God. You can be a hell raiser. You can be, well, just doing all crazy kind of stuff. But when you turn your heart to God, if you turn your heart to God, with all of your heart you come to God, God can start raising you up. God can deal with you right from where you are. Amen. It doesn't matter with him right from where you are. By the same token, if you be living right with God, doing everything right with God, and you change your heart and take your heart away from God and start you being the hell raiser, at the end, at the end, God gonna judge you by that end. Amen. You can, so you can walk away from God. Take your heart away from God. And God gonna judge you. And I don't really know what, what's gonna happen with you, but I know God says, uh, I think it's in Ezekiel said, he, he, he's dealing with the last part of that life. And, and we better stay with God if we're with him, and we better get with God if we're not. Amen. I wanna, I wanna get through the, through, through the end of this today. Turn now to, uh, uh, so we see, see, the, see them get, having obedience, and they're getting abundance. Look at 2 Chronicles 14, 9. That's where we are. We, that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, that, we read that. I just read that. Look at 2 uh, Chronicles 31, 20. When you get to say that, say amen. I'm just reading right here. And thus did Hezekiah. Y'all, you ought to you know, read, read Hezekiah's life out of the Chronicles. Boy, it's some heavy stuff. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. Good, right, and truth before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with what? All his heart. And what happened? He prospered. He prospered. Now notice, we're reading and finding out that God wants all my heart. Yes, amen. One heart. You can't be in love with some, everything else in the world. If you really want the abundance of God, you gotta, you gotta give him your whole heart. And God then will start fighting your battles. He'll, God then will step in when you outnumber. God, God will step in when your, when your debt outnumbers your money. <laughs> God will step in and help you. Get a hold of that, see? But it's all about us keeping holiness and truth in our lives. See, we the church. We're keeping holiness and truth in our lives. Now, last thing we're going to read about this uh, abundance, we're going to look at the help part. Turn to Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4.20. It says, my son, attend to my words. If, even if you can quote these scriptures, I want you to read them. Put your eyes on them. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear, thine ear. You got to do this. You, you, bring, you, bring attention to, you bring your attention to my words. Incline your eyes. You put your, oh, where was it? <laughs> your ear, you incline your ear unto my sayings. Still talking about words, saying you say words. Let them words and saying, let them words and saying not depart from your eyes, 
See, you meditate them inside, your spiritual eye, with your spiritual eye. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. That heart is playing at work again in it, see. For they are life unto those that what? Find them. What? Find what? Those words, those sayings. We got to find them. Where are we going to find them? In the word of God. We got to find these words so we can obey these words. For, for they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. The word of God had, can bring help to every part of your body. The things that the doctors and, and the nurses and all these folks, the specialists, the, the things that they can't deal with, they don't know about yet. The word of God knows about your whole body. Amen. Knows every part in there. And as we get into that word of God, he said these words, these words, uh, what verse, I'm, uh, Stephen, 22. For they are life unto those that find them and what? Help to all their flesh. Huh? Get a hold of that. Get a hold of that. Help to all their flesh. So God, God wants to make us healthy. And if we keep holding this and think about it, how many people in the church that, do, that don't know that God can heal anything? and will heal anything when we get one hearted. Hallelujah. One hearted. So don't ever say God did, wouldn't do this for me and he wouldn't do that and this doesn't work and that doesn't work. No, no. You need to get one hearted. And God, God has no respect of person. Don't go, try to go telling God you're doing everything you, you, you can do. You might be doing everything you know to do, but you're not do, you haven't done the right thing until God's word works. Because God's word works. And don't, don't try to put yourself up above God. Let God's word be true. Yes. That's why the, uh, we, we, we're looking at this, holiness and truth. Right living and truth, truth walking, living in the truth of God's word God goes to fighting battles, battles that we don't even know how they got, they, they started. We don't know how, how this stuff get, got in our body. We don't know how we did this and how we did that. Get one hearted with God and let God deal with it. And God will deal with it because, he, now these folk are in the Old Testament. We in the New. These folk were servants of God. We are children of God. And God would definitely do in our lives what he did for these folk in their lives. Amen. Get a hold of that. Think about it now. God is, is thundering and beating down the enemy. And, and you're going to tell me he, he won't do that for us. And the good part about it is God has already done it for us. That's the good part. These folk had to get God to do it. We just got to receive what he already did. Praise the Lord. Amen. We got to get one hearted about what he already did. About, now, you know, don't, if you just one of these people that, that confess Jesus as Lord and you haven't spent time with him in the time since then, you don't seek after him, you can't, you can't have this kind of abundance from God. You can, you can, but you have to turn and be one hearted. You got to repent like Asa did. You got to repent and get one hearted and then God will start fighting your battles and your families Amen. and your family. See, yeah. when, but, but you got to be, you got to be the leader of your family and start doing the work to get the house back one hearted. Yeah. Amen. God wants to fight your battles. God wants you, us to be blessed. God wants us to be the light in the world. He wants us to be the, sight, the salt of the world. God wants us to be shining as, 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 as kings and priests in this world, leading people and showing people how to come unto God. Yeah. That's what he wants for your life. That's what he wants for my life. And we're going to have to stop right here this time. Our time has run over. 
uh, every, every, uh, perhaps there's someone here now that ha you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord, you are missing such great help. You are missing the things that God wants, wants you to do. You're missing the things that God wants to bless you with. You're missing all of God's purpose for your life. And if you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord, that means you haven't come to God yet. But God will take you whenever you come. Any Christian, any Christian anywhere can have, have, have the anointing to bring you to God. Any Christian can lead a person to God. I'm ministering to you right now, so I want to lead you to God. If you haven't received him and you want to receive him right now, I just want you to bow your head and follow me in this prayer that, I, that, in this prayer that I'm going to pray for you. Father God, I come to you just as I am. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin. I also believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead for my justification. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Make my life better. Make it beautiful. I, I, right now, my testimony is that I am saved. I'm whole. I'm healed, I'm on the road to prosperity. I'm clean from the inside out. I'm so thankful, Jesus, that I am saved. I, wanna live, I will live for you, and I want to live in you. Amen. All right, praise God, praise God. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I have something I want to get you sometime soon. Uh, maybe right, right now you 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 feeling this this way, but just a, just shoot, probably before the day end, you'll be wondering, what's what what's it, what do I do now? What's the next thing I'm supposed to do? Well, I I, I went through that too, and uh, I got God told me to write this little book to help you to help people when they receive Jesus, what's the next step? So I want you to give you this book. I want you to get it free. And uh, 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 it, it can tell you the next steps to take. And if you take these steps, when you finish, and you can tell there's not much to do, you can read this book in like 15, 20 minutes. And, and if you take those steps, by the end of, of, of those steps, you will have met some Christian, some Christian people. And then you can, you, you can get into a good church and you can start growing and meeting, meeting the saints of God, finding your place in the body of Christ, in the church. So I want you to get, get this book. It, you, the, all the ways you can get it will be on the screen. Uh, uh, if, if you are with us in our streaming network, you, I don't, you, you, you can be anywhere in the world, see, and you can hear us. I want you to have the book too. I don't care how far it is. If you are just just uh, write us, or we can give you a phone number. The phone number there that says uh, Pastor Support. That phone number for for Pastor Support. If you'll just dial that number and uh, leave your name and address, we'll send this book to you free of free of. Uh, charge. We, we'll pay the postage and everything else. I want you to get this book in your hand. And uh, if you, if, if you, if, uh, you can, you can order it, mail, 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 and, you know, ask for it. And, and the address will be on the screen too. It's up there as well. Or if you're in the United States or in this area, you can just stop at the church and pick one up. Just tell the person, I prayed that prayer with Pastor Holloway. And even if you don't know my name, just say, I prayed that prayer with the pastor. And he said I could have the book. And I, I stopped by to pick it up. That's any day between 9 a.m. 
and, he, and uh, 2 p.m., Tuesday through Friday, in the day that week, like that, Tuesday through Friday, you can stop and pick up your copy of the book. I really want you to have it because I knew, I know rather, how I stumbled over things because I didn't know what to do next. I didn't know all the things I should have done next. And you don't have to go through that, amen. So we thank God for you. Welcome to the kingdom. That's what the name of this book is, Welcome to the Kingdom. So you are in the kingdom of God now, if you prayed that prayer with me, and you are also in the family of God, if you prayed that prayer with me. And we just want to welcome you now into the family. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, Put your eyes on the screen right now. Good morning, Breath the Life family, and those who may be tuning in for the very first time. Welcome to the Virtual Bible Bowl with your game show host, Minister Malik Johnson. Give it up for our, give it up, give it up, y'all, give it up. Yeah, yeah, leave the comment section, the clap emojis, leave them all below in the comment section, all right? And today, we have four amazing students who will be participating in this year's Bible Bowl. We have here Mr. Chase James, we got Mr. Scott Jones here, Mr. Donald Chisholm Jr., and Mr. Gabe Higginbottom. We are excited to have these young men uh, man, do some Bible trivia and just see what they know concerning these Bible stories. Amen. And again, every summer we do something, uh, rather it might be the Proverbs, Summer Read, or the, uh, the Bible uh, Summer Read, whatever the case may be, we want to make sure that, especially throughout the summer, that they are getting the Word and the Word is staying in front of them at all times. Amen. So with that said, we're about to get straight into it. All right. So. First and foremost, this is not a competition, but an exhibition. You all are all winners already. Y'all can give y'all a hand for that. Yeah. You are already winners. Amen. So here, here's how the rounds will follow. Once my, there we go. Round one, show, show your multiple choice corresponding letter. Y'all got that? All right. Round two, it's the same as round one. But for the fill in the blank questions, simply raise your hands to answer. All right. And for round three, since you won't need those letters, raise your hand and you all will be mic'd up to answer the questions. All right. And don't forget, you only have 10 seconds to answer each question. Y'all got that? Y'all got that? Y'all understand that? Because I'm quizzing y'all too. Hey, Amen. I'm quizzing everybody that's watching. Praise God. So, with that said, let's get into round one. All right, are y'all ready, gentlemen? Here we go. Y'all ready? Y'all good? Let's do this. Question number one. What happened to Lot's wife when she turned around to see the city raining brimstone from fire from heaven? Is it A, got caught on fire? Is it B, melted? Is it C, became a pillar of salt, or is it D, ran back to the city? Let me see what y'all got. Okay, hold up. Now show them, show them, yeah, show the audience there. All righty, all right, everyone seems to, got, to have C, and the answer is C, that she became a pillar of salt. Great job, y'all. Okay, okay, I see y'all getting warmed up. Good stuff, y'all, I love it, I love it. Next question. This is based on Moses in the Passover. The Lord will pass through your house in Egypt as long as you had what on your lintel and side post on your door? Is it A, balloons and decorations, which don't sound too bad? Is it B, crosses? Is it C, blood from a blemish-free lamb? Or is it D, graffiti? All right, time. Okay, y'all might not need much time. Okay. All right, show the audience. As soon as you show me, show the audience, all right? Everyone seems to have C, and the answer is C, blood from a blemish-free lamb. Great job, young men. I love it. I love it. Let's get on to the next question. Joseph at the time was how old? How old when he was feeding the flock with brethren? Was it A, 19, B, 
28, C, 12, or D, 17. All right, I see y'all. Show the audience. Let me see. And don't be copying off anybody else now. Make sure it's your personal answer. Praise God. And all right, everyone seems to have 17. Let's confirm. Oh, yes, that is the answer. 17 years of age. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Y'all, okay, y'all seem to be doing pretty good right now. Okay, I got to get y'all tricked up a little bit. Let's see what we got. Next question. Feral dreamed for exactly how long? Is it A, six months, B, two full years, C, almost two years, or D, one full year? The timer is on now. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What would you got? Let me see. Two, one. All right, show the audience. Okay. Everyone seems to be unanimous with B, and the answer is B, two full years. I see y'all, man. I love it. I love it. Let's get on to the next question. It says, what instrument was used during uh, their march around Jericho? Is it A, trumpet of ram's horns? Is it B, trumpets? Is it C, drums? Or is it D, the triangle, which is my personal favorite instrument? All right, let me see. Mm, okay, show the audience. Let me see. They say A. Let me see if they're correct. And the answer is yes. The answer is A, trumpets of ram's horn. I, I mean, y'all just, y'all getting it right now, man. And I love it. I love it. Let's get on to the next question. Now, remember, I told y'all uh, concerning the you know, measurements, I need feet and inches, right? Y'all remember that? So concerning the three Hebrew boys, how tall was King Nebuchadnezzar's golden image? Is it A, 90 feet high, 9 inches wide? B, 10 feet high, 10 feet wide? C, 9 <coughs> feet high, 90 feet wide? Or is it D, 90 feet wide, 9 feet high? The timer is on, okay? Ooh, we half and half right here. Show the audience. Let's see. Couple A's, a couple D's, and the letter answer is D, 90 feet high, 9 feet wide. Now, if you read the King James, it's going to talk about cubits and all that, and that's perfectly fine. But I wanted to, you know, we, we operate on inches and, and feet nowadays. Praise God. All right, y'all. Next question. Uh-oh. How tall was Goliath? Was it A, 7 feet 6 inches tall? B, 10 feet tall? C, 9 feet 4 inches tall? Or D, 8 feet 11 inches tall? Mmm. Okay. I don't know what you... Oh, that's your answer. That's your problem. All right, show the, let's show the, show the audience. Everyone that seems to have C. Let's see if they're correct. And the answer is, oh, they got it. Nine feet, four inches tall, which you can imagine is pretty tall. All right, last question of the round. What was Jonah's response when the sailors asked him what they should do to calm the violent storm? Two-part question. And how long was Jonah in the belly of the great big fish? Is it A, have a barbecue he was never there to begin with, is it B, cast himself in a sea, and he was there for three days and three nights? Is it C, cast himself in a sea for three days and two nights? Or D, throw one of the sailors in there for three days and three nights? All right, okay. Mm. Okay, everyone seems to have a show the audience. Let's see what they're looking like. Everybody says B, and the answer is B, cast himself in a sea, and he was in the belly for three days and three nights. This concludes round one. Give it up for him, y'all. Give it up. Give it up. Yeah, leave the, you know, leave the, the clapping hands emojis in the comment section below. And I want to see y'all answers too. All right, we're gonna read them when we're done. All right, praise God. But get ready now to tune into our panel discussion as we are getting your child ready for school. Thank you. Hello, I'm Minister Reginald Harris. Listen, I'm a minister, but I'm also a parent of three. 
and it is back to school time, guys. It is here already. So listen, I know many of you have di many different emotions and like, what are we going to do kind of thing? And trust me, in my household, we've had the same thing. But let me tell you something. God is able. He's not surprised about any of these times right now. And so we need to look to him. And we also need to look with one another for information and testimonies as to how we are to handle this school year. So listen, you're going to uh, hear a few voices right after mine. Pay close attention. Take notes. Because again, we're all in this together. Hello, I'm Kenya Cervetti, and I serve as headmistress for Breath of Life Preparatory Academy right here in Memphis, Tennessee. We made the decision to return face to face to educate our young eagles. I know that many of you may have been torn with the decision of whether or not to go face to face or to have a virtual learning experience for your child. I would like to take this opportunity to encourage you to be unapologetic about standing on the word of God. His word tells us that in all of our ways to acknowledge him and he will direct our path. And we have acknowledged God in our decision to return face to face and he has shown himself faithful and his word has been true. As we stand daily on Psalms 91, a thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand. It is our confession of faith here at Breath of Life Preparatory Academy that nothing will come near our dwelling. In that, we confess that nothing, no sickness, no disease, will come and attach itself to our scholars, to the families of our scholars, and we are believing God daily that our scholars will continue to be successful. They're able to wear their mask every day without any interruption to their learning. Our educators are excited to be back in the classroom educating our eagles as they've always done. We have the opportunity to touch them in a way that blesses them and ensures that their academic success is all that God would have it to be. I encourage you to fight for your family with the word of God. So whatever the decision is that you've made for your child, know that when you acknowledge God, he will indeed direct your path. Be blessed. All right, all right, we are back live in direct. Man, give it up again for the for everybody, man. I hope y'all learning something so far with the panel discussion and everything in between, all right? So let's get ready now for our round two questions. Gentlemen, are y'all ready? All right, cool. You know, I can't see y'all mouth. Y'all got to give me the nod. Hey, man, yeah, let me get them nods. Here we go, y'all. First question is, what was the name of the city God told Lot to escape to? Is it A, Memphis? Don't look at the screen. Is it A, Memphis, B, Sodom, C, Zor, or D, Egypt? The time is on that. Time of time. All right, once you have it, show me. And then once you show me, show the screen. All right. Okay. 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 All right, show the screen. I mean, I'm sorry, not, yeah, yeah, show the audience. Okay, we got, what, three out of four? Ooh, wait, let's see, and the answer is C, Zor. I, I was going to throw one of y'all off with that question. <laughs> got y'all. All right, so here we go. Next question on the screen. Oh, was that me? I'm sorry. Next question on the screen. And in the first day, there shall be an blank and in the seventh day there should be a blank to you this is fill in the blank no multiple choice fill in the blank once you know it yes sir okay all right all right my main man dj said holy convocation i'm assuming for both or maybe just one for both okay let's see if he got it. an answer is correct Holy convocation and holy convocation to you. Great job, DJ. All right, all right. Next question is, Joseph said he had another dream. He saw the sun, moon, and how many stars bowing to him? Is it A, 11, B, 10, C, 12, or D, millions? Okay. Show the show the audience now. Mm, okay. Well, we got. I didn't see Gabe's. Can I see Gabe's right quick? Okay. Everybody says 
Well, we got three out of four that says A, one that says D. Let's see who is correct. It is A. Quest, I mean, the answer is 11. Great job, y'all. Okay, yeah, I'm starting to get some of y'all now. <laughs> All right, next question. Who did Pharaoh go to first to try to interpret his dream? Is it A, another dreamer? B, magicians of Egypt? C, magicians of Atlantis? Or D, Joseph? Okay, 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 okay. Turn them around. Oh, we 50-50, y'all. Yeah, you can turn it to them. We 50-50. Mm, we got two Ds and two Bs. All right, and the answer is B, magicians of Egypt. All right, y'all doing good, man. I see y'all. Next question. It says here, how many priests and how many trumpets of ram's horns were passed on before the Lord? Is it A, seven and seven? B, six and six? C, five and seven? Or D, one and two? Okay, okay. Ooh, okay. Let's go. Turn them around. We got three A's and a C. Let's see who we got. The answer is A. Seven and seven. Uh, again, I'm going to read y'all questions in the comment section. Make sure y'all getting this stuff right, all right? Mm -hmm. Praise God. All right, y'all, next question. King Nebuchadnezzar threw the three Hebrew boys in a fiery furnace. But after he threw them in, he soon saw how many inside total and who was that person or who were those people. Is it A, six? and their girlfriends, B, five, mom and dad, C, it was just them, it was just them, or D, four, and the son of God. Ooh, we unanimous with this one. Y'all sure it ain't A? All right, turn it to the screen. They say D, and the answer is indeed four, son of God. Great job, y'all, man. Y'all getting these questions in, man. Two, we're almost done with round two, and it says here. Let me get to it. Why did David decide to not wear Saul's armor? Is it A, he couldn't fit the armor? B, he wasn't used to the armor? C, he didn't like how they looked? Or D, none of the above? I'll show you again. I'll say them again. I'll say them again. Is it A, he couldn't fit the armor. B, he wasn't used to the armor. C, he didn't like how the armor looked. Or D, none of the above. You have five seconds. Okay. Okay. Which one are you holding up, Scott? This one. All right. Ooh, we got a mixed bag here. Show the audience right quick. Show the audience. We got a, what, an A and a, two Ds and a B, something like that. Let's see, let's see who's correct in these streets. The answer is B. <laughs> he wasn't used to the armor. Now, VeggieTales told me that it didn't fit. They lied. All right? Another <laughs> Any, anywho, the final question of the round. How did Jonah get out of the big fish? Is it A, he fought the fish? B, the Lord made a deal with the fish? C, he escaped, or D, the Lord spoke to the fish and vomited Jonah out to dry land. Okay? All right, all right. Turn it to the audience. We got three out of four right here. Let's see what we got. And the answer is, I ain't going to lie, I thought A too. But it is D, the Lord spoke to the fish and vomited Jonah out to dry land. Give it up for yourselves, y'all. This concludes round two. Man, I hope y'all ready for this final round. It's going to get difficult. A little difficult now, all right? All right, praise God. Now, let's get back to the panel discussion concerning our students and this new school year and how to prepare. Thank you. Hello, Breath of Life family. My name is Natalie Jeans, a fellow member here at the church, and I just want to encourage all of you through this pandemic. I know that we are in uncertain times, and 
a lot has changed and we're doing things a lot different now in school in particular. So I want to encourage you to trust God and allow God to help you make the decision in terms of um, choosing what's best for your children, whether it's going to physically attend school or virtual learning or do another option, homeschool like myself. So um, we prayed, my husband and I prayed, and we actually decided to do homeschool for our son Chase. It is going well. But again, we put God first. We put him first in terms of making the decision. We put him first every morning because we know that it's something new for us. So most of us, we are teachers. And so it's new for us. So I just want to encourage you all to stay inspired, stay encouraged, stay positive because we are going to get through this time by keeping God first. That's what's important, right? So again, I love you guys and just be encouraged. Family, those are some awesome testimonies. I know that I was blessed by them. And listen, one thing that I really took away from it is that we have to shift our focus. We, we live in a different world as Christians. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. And so we have God on our side. We cannot lean into our own understanding. We have to trust him every step of the way. And see, so we have wisdom with the counselors that we have from our, our friends and our family and our church members. But we have to lean on God for our specific plan. So that's why the Holy Spirit acknowledging him right now is so vitally important. And listen to me, make sure that your conversation matches your confession. And make sure that everything that you say around your children is nothing but joy and excitement about what God is gonna do in this season. So be blessed family, we're praying for you and we're here. Love you and see you soon. All right, all right, this is the final round. Hope y'all ready. Oh, it's serious now. Y'all thought it was a game show? It is, but it's serious now, all right? Serious stuff. As you see, the letters are gone. They have microphones in their hand, which means they got to know it. Ain't no guessing getting 25% right now. You got to know this now, all right? So we're going to ask these questions. When you know it, let me know. We go from there. Fair enough? Let's do this. First question. Behold, fill in the blank. Can I, can, can I read it first? Oh, I thought you were done. Y'all ain't supposed to be looking at the screen. Y'all look at this. Anywho, all right, as I was saying, behold, fill in the blank. Behold, now thy servant had found blank in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy blank, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape the mountain lest some blank take me and I die. Genesis 19, 19. All righty. Let me see what you have first. Go ahead and tell me, Mr. DJ. All right, just give me the blanks. Okay, so oh, say it in the mic, though. Okay. So the first blank is grace. Mm -hmm. The second blank is mercy. And the last blank is evil. What do y'all, do y'all rebuttal this? Do y'all confirm or rebuttal? In other words, give your answer. Versus, you know, you might not agree with his, so. Yeah, I know everyone did. I'm saying, so do y'all agree with his answer? Everyone agrees? No one has a different answer? Uh-oh, what's, what, say it then, say it in the mic. Grace, uh -huh. mercy. Grace, mercy, and evil. Okay, anybody else has a different answer? Talk to me. Microphone, microphone. Evil, mercy, and grace. Mm. Gabe. It's just, it's just first question, y'all. I mean, it's... All right, and the answer is, let me see who's correct. Grace, mercy, and evil. Ah, look at y'all. So well, I think, what, two of y'all got that right? One of y'all? <laughs> all right, all right. The next question. Ah, look, don't look at the screen. I'm going to tell y'all. Why was there a great cry in Egypt? Exodus 12, 30. Mr. Gay. Scott. Because God killed all the firstborn in Egypt? 
DJ, you have a different answer, perhaps? There is not a house without someone dead. Mm. Do you have a different answer? Uh, all the firstborn, all the firstborn Egyptian children had to die. Mm. Let's see what the. Oh, you have something okay. else. I don't know if I said with or without. I don't know if I said with or without, but there is not a firstborn. No, 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 no. There is not, there is not a house without someone dead. Okay. Well, let's see in a nutshell who gets it. There wasn't a single house that didn't have one dead. Okay, y'all. I saw, I heard y'all rendition of it. Good job, y'all. That was pretty good. Next question. What three things? did Joseph's brother do to him because of their jealousy? Ooh. Chase, holla at me first. Mm, okay. Okay. Anybody else? Do y'all confirm this? Deny this? Oh, say it in the microphone one more time. They stripped him of his coat, they sold him, and they gave his coat to his father. Okay. Anybody else? DJ, holla at me. So, so um, they stole his special coat. They threw him in the pit. They were going to kill him, but they saw some Ishmaelites coming down the street. So they said, let's go ahead and sell him for 20 pieces of silver. Mm, okay. Gabe, talk to me. They, t they pushed him down the pit, took his coat, ripped it, and sold him for 24 pieces of silver. Mm, okay. And Scott, what is your answer? They pushed him in a pit and sold him for 20 pieces of silver and took his robe. Mm, okay, let's see who has the right of right answers. And the answer is, stripped him from his coat of many colors, threw him in the pit, and sold him for 20 pieces of silver. Mm, there you go. The order was, was a little bit different, but you got it right, essentially. Same thing with uh, with, uh, with Chase. Order was in there. So I, life a little different ain't when the multiple choice ain't there. All right, y'all. And again, I need to see y'all answers too, church. I need to see y'all answers in the comment section, all right? And the parents of these children don't be cheating, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Next question. Based on Joseph's interpretation of the king's dreams. What was the king needing to do so his people will not suffer? Genesis 41, 35 through 36. DJ, talk to me. Um, so store up food, store up food because for the next 70 years, the people will suffer. Say it one more time in the microphone. Store up food because for the next seven years, famine were to come upon. Okay. Gabe, talk to me. Um, store up grain, which was their food back then, and um, yeah, store up food because there uh there was a great storm coming up upon them or something. Okay. Yeah. Chase, let me hear your answer. Store this excess food for the seven good years to prepare for the famine. Mm. DJ, I mean, I'm sorry, Scott. They stored up food for the next seven years because famine was about to come. Mm. Okay. Let's see what the answer is. They all said like it was in the ballpark. So let's see what we got. Store up food for seven years of famine that will happen after the first seven years of plenty. Good job, y'all. Look like y'all were studying. Mm. I heard studying like y'all love Jesus. Anyway, God. Let's get into the next question. How many times did they march around the city on the seventh day? And what command did Joshua give out afterwards? DJ. So they marched around seven times, and Joshua said, he gave the command, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Mm. Talk to me. March around... March around the city seven times, and Joshua gave out shout for the Lord has given you the city. Mm, okay, Mr. Gabe, do you do you agree? Disagree? I agree, Mr. Uh, Scott. I agree. 
Okay, we all out here agreeing. I wish we did that more in America. All right, and the answer is seven times, and he commanded uh, them to shout. Great job, gentlemen. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. We ain't done yet. Mm -mm. Nope. Here we go. Next question. What did King Nebuchadnezzar decree? What did he decree based on Daniel 3.29? Mr. Scott, talk to me. There is no God but God. Okay. DJ? So every people that, or the nation or language that spoke or did something against what the Hebrew boys, God said, or his rules, they would be cut into pieces. Mm, okay. Talk to me. That every nation or language that speak of the of the God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made of dunk heel. Mm. Okay. Do you agree, disagree? Talk to me. Um, I agree. Okay. Talk to me. Well, DJs? Yeah, or Chasers? Or Chasers? Scott. All right, and let's see what the answer is. Whoop! They shall be cut in pieces, and their house should be made a dungeon because there is no God that can deliver after this sword. Chase, I heard you, boy. I heard you. Man, you were so good. You had your mama shouting. I, I'm not for certain, but I can just sense that she was shouting. All right? Praise God. Let's go to the next question. How many smooth stones did David choose from the brook to put in his shepherd bag? And where? Did, uh, did David hit Goliath exactly that caused Goliath to fall? 1 Samuel 17, 40 and 49. Chase, talk to me. Five smooth stones and he did them on his Hmm. Do y'all agree, disagree with y'all? Agree. agree. Everybody agree? Chase, why everybody agree with you? You know why? Because you are correct, my good sir. You are correct. All right, all right. Praise God. I believe we have maybe one more question. Let's see what we got here. It says here, after how many days did Jonah say Nineveh will be destroyed? And what did the people of Nineveh do once they heard Jonah speak? I'm going with Gabe. Um, okay, so what they specifically did but um what i but what i'm going to say is the city was bad and he was going to destroy it and joseph would go there and say what god told them to stop what they were doing okay chase talk to me say it again what was your answer what was the next one Oh, uh, it says how? Well, first of all, say the first part again. How many days did Jonah say Nineveh will be destroyed? What was that answer? Forty days. Forty days. And then the second part is, and what did the people of Nineveh do once they heard Jonah speak? They believed God and started to fast. Mm, okay. Scott, talk to me. Uh, he uh, number one, he said it for, for forty days, and. Okay. They started believing God and called a fast and started putting on uh, some kind of clothes and uh, from youngest to oldest. Mm, okay. DJ, what's your answer? So it was 40 days. And, um, so they proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth. Can you say that one more time, sir? So it was 40 days and they proclaimed a fast while putting on sackcloth. At the same time. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And the answer is. 40 days and they proclaim the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Woo-wee! Great job, y'all, but I got a bonus question. All right, all right. So here is our bonus question. Gentlemen, y'all ready? You got to say it yes, together sir. in the microphones in unison. Y'all ready? The final question. Don't look at me. Look at, this, look at them. Look at the audience. Final question is, you can't love God and not love his word. <laughs> and this concludes our 2020 
Highway Bible Bowl. Congratulations, young men. You are all winners. Give yourselves a round of applause. And leave, all the, leave the rounds of applause in the comment section as well. Hit the share button, y'all. Let's share some good news, amen. Hit the share button, like, comment, do all that. We thank you all so much for tuning in to this year's Highway Bible Boy. Again, I am your game show host, Minister Malik Johnson. These are our guys, DJ, Scott, Chase, Dave. Again, we thank you all for tuning in. And y'all have a wonderful week in the name of Jesus. Christ bless. All right, praise God. How many made a hundred? No hands, no hands. How many made a hundred? All right, we get ready to let you go. Uh, thank you for being with us today. And when you see the children, kind of give them a big old, you know, well, fist, fist pump or something. They did well, amen, praise God. Thank you, uh, uh, Malik. Tell Malik. Thank you. <laughs> We're ready to go. Praise God. Uh, there might be someone here today that needs, needs uh, prayer for healing in your body. We want to pray that prayer for you. Praise God. So you'll just put your hand on your device. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for healing our bodies through Jesus Christ. The stripes that he received were for us. And we receive them right now. Sickness, disease, infirmity. I command you now to be cast into the sea. Leave everybody that you are tormenting and be cast into the sea. Healing manifest right now from the top of my sister brother's head to the tip of their toes, healing manifesting right now. Father, we thank you and give you glory and praise that it's done. Amen. All right, thank you for being with us today and uh, as you move about the city this week, pray for somebody and tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. Always walk in the awareness that Jesus is Lord. Bye-bye. See you next time.